Ah, Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to Coffee Talk! So today we're having Coffee Talk on my front porch. Now, I apologize if it's a little bit windy. If this wind noise is too much, I may have to redo the video, but I'm just going by faith that it's going to sound good. So uh, today we're talking about the mud flood and Tartaria. Don't, don't, don't. Ah, just a reminder, Coffee Talk is for topics that I find interesting but I don't necessarily believe. So, um, what is a mud flood? Well, a portion of this is absolute scientific fact. A mud flood refers to a scientific anomaly known as liquefaction. Liquefaction occurs when the earth is vibrated either through size, uh, seismology, through uh, seismic activity, or uh, manipulated by some electromagnetic wave or some other device. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, when the earth is vibrated, it separates the dry materials from the moisture uh, inside of the earth itself. And the net result is a thing called liquefaction, where the water just, I mean, the earth just turns to mud. And uh, it's quite amazing to see if you want to do a science experiment of your own and see uh, liquefaction at work. Take a handful of, you know, moist earth, but still seems very solid, and put it on a piece of plexiglass. On the bottom of the plexiglass, glue a computer fan to it and rip off all the blades but one so that when you turn it on, it vibrates. When that happens, it'll vibrate the, the plastic plexiglass and the earth that's sitting on top of it will separate the dry and the water elements and re and come back together to create mud. And it'll just run, it'll just, the earth will just turn into mud and roll right off the plexiglass. I've seen it. So you can try that for yourself. Liquefaction is a scientific reality. It's also a reality that a, a, occasionally liquefaction will occur um, you know, due to a seismic event. So like an earthquake can cause these uh, liquefaction events to occur. And it's, it's crazy. I've seen some of this uh, some videotape of this uh, seism, uh, seismic anomaly occurring. And it's just something to watch people kind of realizing that the ground underneath them is turning into mud and that their buildings and houses just start to sink down into the mud. So this, of, this kind of event does occur. Now, what is the mud flood conspiracy? The mud flood conspiracy goes like this, and it depends on which faction of the mud flood conspiracy theorists you come from. So some mud flood conspiracy theorists believe that this occurs naturally that it's one of the problems with planet Earth, and that occasionally this will happen and it'll swallow up whole civilizations. Don't, don't, don't. Erasing their very existence, and that this maybe is what happened to Atlantis. Um, now, the mud flood's only half of the conspiracy because there's another whole section of the conspiracy that's directly related to the mud flood, which is the conspiracy of Tartaria. So, uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but let's continue to talk about the mud flood. People that believe that this happened, some of them believe that's what the flood was. Some of them believe that this happened happens periodically. Sometimes whole continents or whole civilizations get liquefactioned into, you know, and covered up in mud. What I find interesting is that all of the people, whether you believe it was an ancient event or a more recent event, some believing that even America was the victim of a massive mud flood reset in 1850. Don't, don't, don't. The problem I have with these mud flood conspiracies where there's a reset caused by this anomaly, either a natural occurring, occurring anomaly or maybe a weapon used against us by aliens, don't, 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 or an angry god, depending on how you look at it, that these reoccurring mud flood disasters are being covered up by the powers that be. And so the powers that be are covering up this mud, this mud flood reset that happens all the time. What no one seems to be giving me is why. Why would the powers that be, why would the Illuminati, why would, why would they cover up these events? And the one, the, the people that believe strongly in the mud flood, mud flood in current times or modern times will point to architecture. 
and they will show you buildings that are that appear to be sunken down into the ground where it appeared to have been a row of, of windows and arches and doorways but now they're subterranean level or half covered up. But to me, as a guy that studied history, studied architecture, who knows the historical evidence that architecture leaves behind, uh, and also I know a thing or two about structural, well, to give you an example, when they set my house here, you know, the, the land is sloped like this. So the front of my cabin is evil, e equal to the ground in the front, it's a short step up, but in the back I've got two... Uh, sets of cinder blocks to make my house level because the ground is not level. Now I could just have that as dead space or I could fill that in and use it as storage or whatever back there, okay? Um, now, on a much larger scale when you're building a, a big multi-story building like they were building in the in the 1800s in America during the in, uh, early industrial revolution, then um, you have to move mass amounts of dirt and create a basement and your basement you're gonna you're gonna cut back into that bank, right? And you're gonna cut down this way and make this nice and square. So the ground will slope across what is a square structure right down to the basement. The basement's square, the walls are square, and it, and the building is straight. But the earth is slanted, so your foundation, which goes down into the earth, will create this slanted deal here. Now you could have this section letting no light into the basement, or you could open up windows as it. It, and I know a thing or two about this because I, I grew up in a church basement. One of the places I lived when we were moving around is the winter of 1979 and 1980. I spent in a basement of a Victorian era building. And we had those little windows where it, all I saw was people's feet walking by. Didn't mean the church had been s submerged in the mud, <laughs> you know. And that's all that was left of the windows. Those windows were designed like that for the purpose of letting light into the sub-basement. And so um, I think a lot of these people that are examining these mud flood buildings from old photographs in the 1800s that are trying to pin a mud flood in America to the 1850s, I think they just don't understand basic engineering and, and architecture. And uh, they don't understand you know, how you have to build a foundation to build a building on. Now, having said that, uh, I got a lot. I, I need less coffee to believe that the 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 mud flood and the flood, the great flood, were the same things. Because you know the Bible says that the fountains of the deep broke loose, and I could see how if you have all of this earth. I mean, I'm about to drill a well here on my place because there's water right underneath the, the dirt here. There's big a big underground river, and if you had liquefaction. Now the water from underneath would just come boiling to the top and create mud. And you could, and you could um, basically submerge an entire civilization. And I think that's maybe what happened specifically in Egypt to the, some of the pyramid structures and the Sphinx in particular. Looks like, you know, people say, well, no, that's water has eroded, has, uh, has, uh, has carried dirt, and, and, and windstorms have carried dirt, and it's slowly covered up the Sphinx over centuries. But I think more than likely... The ground around the Sphinx liquefied and the whole thing just dropped down into the earth. And then when it, the vibration was done, the earth resettled. So this might be an example of the ancient flood being actually a, a mud flood event or liqui liquefaction, uh, liquefaction event. Now, so we kind of covered the mud flood. Um, I have a problem with the, that recent reset, people saying that this happened in 1500 or 1800, because I have this really well-defined and interlocking multinational, multi multicultural, historical perspective. Like, I have studied Christian history, I have studied European history, I have studied Asian history, and I know a thing or two about the nation of Tartaria, or a people known as the Tartars. I don't know whether that's where tartar sauce came from or not. <laughs> but all this is pretty fishy if you ask me. So, uh, let's talk about Tartaria. So the claim is that there was a massive civilization north of China, north of Russia, that's the parent civilization for most of Europe and most of Russia, and that Attila the Hun and Genghis Khan were Tartarians, and that there's this... The one thing that this conspiracy theory study has proven to me, and I don't need any coffee for this, is that Genghis Khan was not Asiatic. G 
Genghis Khan was redheaded. Battle um, imagery from soldiers who were there during some of these wars always showed that Genghis Khan had red hair and light skin and a big red beard. And the reason we think that Genghis Khan is Chinese looking or Mongoloid looking is because most of the imagery we have are from the historical archives of China. And China didn't know much about their northern neighbors because they put up the wall, right? And so the, I think most people who study this concept believe that we have this false belief that Genghis Khan was Asian because we don't understand who the people of the Caucasus, who the people of the steppes were, who the people of the northern beyond the, 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 uh, the Great Wall of China and beyond what we know now as modern Russia into Siberia and Mongolia, that these people were actually um, Indo-Aryan, red-headed, maybe descendants of the red-headed giants. Don't, don't, don't. Some believe that these people, in varying waves from Attila the Hun and Genghis Khan and other more peaceful incursions ended up founding a nation that we all know quite well called Ireland. Doo -doo -doo. So what does all of this have to do with the mud flood? That there's a group of people on the internet who are, are putting forth this conspiracy theory that there was a another great civilization that's been completely wiped out that we're unaware of that was as technologically advanced or even more technologically advanced than we are right now. I'm a, I, that's too many dodo does for today. That's that's I've reached my dodo do limit. Uh, so what they're saying is is that there was. And they, they've produced some interesting images that they claim are coming from northern Russia. That, that this is suppressed information, that there's a massive uh, cover-up to suppress the fact that there was a northern nation known as Tartaria who, uh, uh, who was basically well known to be the source of most all civilization and that these people have been erased due to a mud flood uh, occurrence that basically swallowed them up and made their home a, a wasteland. And uh, they've got some images that are interesting that they're, that they're showing that, that look like Vermana. You know what a Vermana is? A Vermana is from the ancient Indian text where they talk about flying carpets, but a Vermana is like a hovering spaceship that looks kind of like a pyramid or a cross between a pyramid and a bell. And um, <clears throat> these floating um, uh, ships, essentially, are seen over what looks like a Victorian-era setting. So there's a lot of, of uh, Victorian imagery in these pictures that look like postcards. And, you know, the, the person that's showing these is saying that he thinks they're photographs. Although I think the people that are, that are uh, releasing them to the public... Uh, are saying that they're artist renditions, but it looks to me to be like a tintype photograph of these Victorian settings with these flying machines. So they're saying that the Tartarians had an advanced civilization and that somewhere, some people say 1750, some say 1850, a mud flood occurred and liquefaction destroyed their entire culture. But we have the remnants of their culture all around the world and for some reason, their existence was covered up. Do, do, do. Had to slip one more in there. Uh, and they base a lot of this on some of the uh, historical vacant holes concerning the Tartars. Now, I personally have studied the Tartars and I found them very interesting. And, you know, they're, they were considered nomadic horsemen. They're the inventors of the, of the curved saber. You know, the, the whole idea of swinging a sword from horseback really comes from them. The idea of the mounted archer, you know, on horseback comes from the Tartars, the Hun, the Mongolians, you know, Genghis Khan, these uh, northern tribesmen. And in my study of history, in this reality, you're going to see what I'm getting at here in a minute, in this current reality, um, you know, and, and my, my reality growing up was that we just didn't know much about those people because they were nomadic and they didn't have a lot of culture and there's not, they're just kind of wild men. 
right? But they, but they're also the authors of some modern warfare. I mean, they were incredible warriors. Um, but people that believe in the mud flood Tartarian conspiracy believe that there was much more advanced civilization there, and um, it's been covered up. Um, but they don't really offer you why. Why <laughs> was it covered up? But in my reality, the Tartars, we knew about them. You know, they just weren't that big a deal. But in, you know, what's coming to light now are people are uncovering information and images and things that suggest that there was a much greater, more advanced civilization there than, than just a bunch of tribesmen on horseback. That really the Tartars, the Tartarians, are, uh, you know, related potentially to uh, the giants, the pre-giants, uh, the pre-flood giants, the red-headed giants, that these red-headed tribesmen came and settled in uh, Ireland and brought with them this this lost culture. Um, but I'd like to say this. What if this is a Mandela effect? Because I feel like I pretty much understand the history and I understand why they want to fill in the blanks. The blanks in history are there due to a thing called the Dark Ages. But what if the Dark Ages were actually because of the mud flood that destroyed this advanced civilization. What if the fall of Rome doesn't explain the Dark Ages, that period of time when we don't have a lot of history? The only history that, that survives it is that during the Dark Ages, there were Christian monks who transcribed in handwritten volumes all of the greatest writings of history. And history as we know it survived through these monks through the Dark Ages of chaos following the fall of the Roman Empire. But what if during that same period there was a destruction of this advanced civilization known as the Tartars? What if there was the these people had flying machines, they had biological weaponry, they had you know, advanced technology, and that was all destroyed and the thing that we call the Dark Ages is the reset. Don't 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 But here's another angle. This may be a sage original. I don't know. I, I heard other people talk about it, but what if my version of history, the one I've studied, that says the Tartars were just like regular tribesmen, what if that's for my universe and we have experienced a shift, a Mandela effect, and the Mandela effect essentially wiped out the history concerning this advanced civilization, that when the two realities merged, all that we have is some of this, uh, you know, kind of uh, esoteric proof or evidence that leads you to believe there might have been an advanced civilization in recent history that, that was uh, erased, um, you know, or, or mine, you know, my reality where it, these people never really existed. They were just kind of a loose group of nomadic tribesmen that never had any great kings. But I have really discovered in my research that I personally was not aware of some of the more advanced realities of the Tartars that I'm kind of surprised that being a history student that I didn't know more about these people because there's a lot more since I started this study than I was aware of you know the these uh cognates these Turkish people from the steppes from Turkey from that kind of that that region right the Byzantium region that uh you know they moved in early on you know even before Constantine and they begin to affect the uh, the culture, the architecture, the history of uh, of all of Europe. And I was, it almost seems like a Mandela effect. It seems like some of us don't remember that ever being a part of history, and some of us are like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, oh yeah, those people were very, you know, the Tartars, yeah, they were a big deal. So that's a little weird. That's a maybe it's just holes in maybe it's holes in their knowledge. And the internet's filled it, uh, combined with holes in my knowledge that the internet has filled, and the reality is a combination of the two, uh, different views, or somebody's been messing with history. Um, you know, Napoleon famously said that um, the uh, history is whatever the victors sit down and decide it is. So, you know, history gets rewritten by the winners of wars uh, to suit them, which leads me to my final little discussion concerning Tartaria. I've recently discovered that this information about Tartaria is something that hasn't always been around because the Soviet Union erased 
their own history, that they wanted to make the Russian, Moscow Russian uh, culture, uh, they wanted to rewrite history and erase the, uh, the Mongolian and the Siberian influence of these Tartars, these northern tribesmen, or this advanced civilization that's been destroyed and covered up, however you want to look at it. <clears throat> but there's definite facts that our CIA and our government uh, definitely confirmed during the Cold War that the Soviet Union had worked very hard to erase a whole section of Russian history because it didn't favor the Moscovites. It didn't favor the Russian. It favored more the, the Cossacks, more the, uh, the Tartars, these tribesmen, the Hun, um, and that they wanted to downplay their significance in Russian history, and they wanted to upplay the the Moscow's importance of that region. So it's kind. It was a it was a an intended cover up, and that maybe it's not a Mandela effect. Maybe uh, maybe you know I was lied to, not by my government or by our history teachers, but by the people in that region, that they, the Russians themselves, at the time of the Soviet Union, suppressed this history at a time when history was becoming more widely available for everyone to study. So there's a giant hole in that that people have filled with conspiracy theory. That could be it, or it's a Mandela effect, or the Earth is flat, and I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> Ah, all right. Tell me what you think in the comments section. Did the mud flood happen? Is it just a bunch of fantasy? Is it a bunch of people that don't know history and they find some holes so they fill it in with their own ideas about what might have happened? What do you think? Is the mud flood Tartaria conspiracy a real thing? Or, uh, you know, what's your explanation? Tell me in the com comment section. And as you can see, I'm all out of coffee. <laughs>